I'm Steve Bowman. I was the original drummer for Counting Crows, and now I'm in Nashville. I've been doing sessions and, and uh, doing uh, big tours with country artists. Yeah, you know, I, I, f I fell in love with the first drum set I ever saw. And uh, I must have been four or five years old, and we were at a county fair. And I just couldn't get over the fact that there was something that was shiny and loud and beautiful. <laughs> and to this day, I'm, I'm, I'm frozen in time, or frozen in space when I see a drum set. You know, some people see like a Harley Davidson or a, a hot rod or a gorgeous painting. And for me, a vintage drum set stops me in my tracks. One of the great things about drumming is that there's so many different styles of music and so many different technical aspirations that you can try to uh, conquer that you can never be done. You know, there's uh, I've gone through really uh, lots of different phases, um, and I still am. You know, I've, I discovered Scottish drumming, this crazy, you know, three notes in a row and off flams, just nutty stuff. And I did that for a few months, and I really loved it. And I did, then I discovered New Orleans drumming. I got real into that, and then I got into drum and bass, and like I'm still discovering things that that I I get interested in and discover there's eight books on it, and there's masters of the style or of the the what I'm trying to accomplish, and so I just get into these grooves and like just go nuts with them for a while. The reason it's important to learn to read at least to 16th notes is because um, if you can read, you can learn from any transcription you see. Um, also, if somebody calls out something that they want you to recreate, instead of having to remember it in the middle of a song, you can look at it and knock it out. It just makes things so much easier. Um, now, in Nashville, I do a lot of sessions. I never get a chart like, you know, note for note. And there's other people that read that way. I don't, I don't read that way. Um, but being able to uh, recreate a specific uh, rhythm line is important sometimes. And sometimes the producer will want a specific fill. And so just being able to jot something down that you can look at and recognize is really important sometimes. I uh, was listening to an Earl Palmer video and uh, or watching an Earl Palmer video and he did this pattern that was super simple. It was like a, a train beat with this bass drum pattern. And I, and I loved the way it sounded and I went to play it and I couldn't play it. And I thought, well, you know, I've worked so long on such complex, difficult, uh, you know, different coordinations and all this stuff. How come I can't play the simple thing? Well, so I started putting together a series of exercises that would just help me when my, with my note placement, helping get my notes super evenly spaced and even in volume. And I say like a picket fence, you know. Uh, and I discovered that even though I've been playing a long time, I'd never worked on that stuff. And so I wrote the exercises, the original exercises for groove control, and I found that it really helped. It really helped my note spacing and my volume control. And so I started writing more exercises. Next thing you knew, it was like I had 150 pages. <laughs> and so uh, one of the things about, about grooving is that uh, you can actually study the aspects of it and work on grooving by knowing what it is and knowing what to work on. And when you work on grooving, when you work on those two things, your volume and your spacing, everything you play becomes groovy. So, you know, I'd spent years working on all kinds of different things, and I went back and looked at it and was like, oh, that wasn't quite perfectly spaced and even, or, or you know, once you figure that out, it's, it's like everything makes sense when you play it. You know, I love doing records. I love recording. Um, I would, you know, I don't turn down big tours. 
uh, if if those come up and they they seem to come up uh, and come and go <laughs> but what I really want to do is I really want to take advantage of the new technology to get into drum instruction uh, take advantage of the internet and Skype and stuff like that and I feel like it's going to make learning and teaching so much easier. With the information that's on online nowadays, you have no excuse not to be a good drummer. <laughs> You're not trying if you don't if you don't learn from teachers right now. And people have been playing a long time and people are getting online with great sound and great video. I take advantage of it all the time myself in learning from people and now I'm starting to take advantage of it teaching. So I'm really grateful it exists. I think it's going to help drummers become better real uh, much more efficiently and much more quickly. You know, fortunately there's a lot of different things you can do. There's a lot of different styles. A lot. Of, I mean, there's, there's 26 rudiments. If you can play each one of those really well, uh, you know, that's a process. <laughs> And then there's great books that, you know, I've gone through and learned so much from so many of the classic books, and there's new books coming out all the time. And uh, it, there's, there will never, uh, you will never conquer all there is to learn about drumming. And that's a great thing, because you'll, you'll never get stagnant. You'll never uh, get to uh, ruts in your playing when you know that, there's always something you can go check out. And everything you work on affects the drummer you become and the way you feel. And when you play a simple rock beat, it sounds different if you've gone through your Latin phase. And it sounds different if you've gone through a drum and bass phase. And, and even if you're not you know, playing those styles, they seep in and create what, is your, what becomes your, the, the original feel that you are.